Okay, so today I'm going to be um, make, designing a table hockey, so a mini stick table hockey set. I had a student that came to me and asked for some assistance with designing this, so I'm just going to create a quick video showing this. Um, we're using SketchUp for Schools app, which is an online free app. So from here we're going to go to Create New and we're going to um, choose a feet and inches simple template. <clears throat> and we're going to get rid of Dr. Temple Grandin. So we'll just click on him and hit delete. The next thing that uh, we're going to do is we're going to start laying out the base of our project. Now the project that we're I'm loosely basing this off of is one that I've had students build before. Uh, this is from a older version, a 2004 version of a Minwax free plan that was on their website um, that I've managed to save over the years. We're going to try to build something like this, but I am going to change some of the dimensions to make it a little bit easier and work better with the materials that we have access to. So, here we go. We're going to get a rectangle tool. Remember, R is the keyboard shortcut for that, so you just type R and then it'll show up. We're going to go to our origin. We're going to click and release with our left mouse button. We're going to drag it out in this direction. So it should still be spider webby. And then we're going to type in our size of our base. So our base plywood that we're going to be using, we use uh, birch plywood. MDF has worked great in the past too, but um, the price wise, uh, the shop grade birch plywood seems to be the best that we've found lately. So I'm going to type in our dimensions we're going to go with uh, 22.5 inches, comma, 46.5. And you can see where the dimensions are down in the bottom right hand corner of my screen. And then I'm going to hit enter. So there's our base. And I'm just going to zoom in. You can use your scroll mouse if you have an external mouse, or you can uh, do the pinch and pull depending on what type of mouse that you have. Uh, from here, this is only a 2D form, so we're going to get our push-pull. P is the shortcut for that. And we're going to click on the surface of it, release our button again, drag it up so it's still slinky, and we're going to make this 3 quarters of an inch thick because that's the thickness of our base material that we're going to be using, 3 quarter inch plywood. Now, if we hit our space bar, or if you go up to the menu here and get your select tool, we're going to triple click on this. To select it all. The other option is that you can drag a box around it from top left to bottom right and then we're gonna make this a component. The other option is once you have it all selected you can type G for your shortcut to find making a component. So we're gonna call this the base which is really our playing surface for the hockey. Uh, we're gonna just say that we're gonna glue this to any um, angle and we're going to say okay next thing that we're going to do and we're just going to check that it was a component so we click off to the side click on it again you see now the whole thing is selected not just individual parts of the of the shape so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start making our sides for this and in this case I'm going to just simply keep it a little more simple it's not necessarily the the um, finest woodworking style to do but just to keep this simple, we're going to go with um, just simple butt joints and we'll either glue and air nail or glue and screw these on. So going from this one bottom of the piece of plywood, we're going to go over here and that's, and we're going to click again, we're going to drag it out. So it's um, 46 and a half, remember, was our length. So we're going to type in 46.5. We're going to enter a comma and our other dimension that we need for this is three quarters of an inch again so three quarters or you could uh, you can if you know that three quarters is 0.75 you can also enter it as a decimal form it doesn't matter and then we're going to hit enter so now we've got a 2d form for our sides we're going to pull that up to give it its height using our push pull tool remember P is the shortcut for that again click release same as we did with the base and um, we're going to drag the sides up. Let's go um, three inches, I think, for the sides. So 
I'm just going to go back to this plan and double check what this one was. So our side rail is three and a half, it says. I, in the past, I think that seemed a little high, so we're going to go with, uh, with three inches. So three inches. It'll save a little bit of cost too. Now, every time you make a piece, we want to make it a component, so we hit our space bar or get our select tool. We're going to triple click on that again. Uh, just be careful when you're doing that, that if you just double click and the whole thing's not selected, it's not going to work very well. So triple click till the whole thing is selected. We're going to type G, create this as a component. We're going to call this alongside. You can call it whatever you really want. I'm going to say any again, say OK. And uh, there's our first piece. We're going to copy this across to the other side. So we type M for our move tool, or you can go over here and select the move tool, but M is the shortcut. And we hit control, and you see we get that little plus symbol next to it. Plus means that we're copying. So move, copy, move, copy. All right. Really important whenever you're moving or copying things in SketchUp that you know where your intersecting point is going to be. So where is it going to connect to the object? So if we're moving this piece, this side piece over to the other side, we're going to copy it over. This right here is going to be a good intersecting point. So that when we copy this now, it's going to automatically snap to that corner. So there we go. There's our sides already done. Now we need to create our end pieces. So <clears throat> our end pieces, we're going to go with our rectangle tool again. We're going to start at this corner. And we're going to drag it across and see, so that's two feet even. Now there's a reason that I chose two feet as our final size. Uh, just thinking of our plywood size as four foot by eight foot. And it's a lot easier, a lot less waste if you stick with measurements that are close to either right on uh, a foot symbol or um, slightly under to allow for some blade cuts. Um, so we're just going to go with two feet as our width. Also, the ones that we made in the past that followed the actual instructions, I think it was supposed to be like 36 and a half inches, um, or 34 and a half inches, they were quite heavy and take up a lot of space. So this one will take up a little less space and still have lots of room to play. So two feet, comma, three quarters, we're going to make our rectangle again. You notice that it's moving in the blue direction on here. Um, the main thing is that it's moving horizontally away. So there's our end piece. We're going to get our push-pull, so P again for our keyboard shortcut. Click, drag, and we're going to move our mouse over. So we can kind of guess what height it is. If we remembered that it was three, we could type in three and hit enter, or we can just bring our mouse over, so the tip of our arrow, and line that up with the other side, and it'll be the exact same then. So there we go. Once again, we've made a new piece, so we're going to make it a component. So triple click, right click, make component, or type G. We're going to glue to any. We're going to call this um, ends, and we're going to say OK. Now, same process again, M and Control. So move and Control. We're going to copy this to the other end. Oh, I grabbed it at the wrong point, so I'm going to restart that. So now I need to hit Control again, grab it at this corner, move it on over till it snaps in. There we go. We've basically made a box. Um, like I said, we can glue <coughs> and air nail with some brad nails um, the sides to the to the playing surface. The other thing we could do is we could pre glue and pre-drill and screw. We could use pocket hole screws from underneath so you don't see anything. And that might be an option that we'll look at. It's just time dependent and everything else. Uh, lots of options. In the past when I've done this, we've made rabbit joints at the ends here and then glued and air nailed. But um, we're just going to keep this one simple, this here, so let's just go with this. Simple butt joints. Now, any change that we want to make to these end pieces, because it's already a component, um, any change we make to this one is going to make change to the other side, and that's, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> but we can't make any changes to this while it's like this, where it's a solid block when you click on it. So how you do that is you right click on it and say edit component or you double click on it with your mouse and you see this little dotted box around it now that means that we're editing this piece and any change we make to it is going to change the other one that's the advantage of having components is that it will change the other one and you're saving yourself a lot of work so we're going to get our tape measure tool 
And so T is the keyboard shortcut for that. If you can't find it, it's down here, third from the bottom. We're going to find the middle of our piece here first because we don't want our goal off to the side at all. We want it nice and even. So we're going to start just at this edge. And we're going to move over until it matches up with the midpoint of this board. So one foot. Um, if you don't, the nice thing about it is that if you don't know what half of, say, 26 and 3 eighths is, uh, by just going to the midpoint, it's automatically going to find what that, what that center point is. Okay, now we, we want our goal to be perfectly flush or even with the bottom, of, with the top of the playing surface. So that thickness, of course, was three quarters of an inch. So we're going to move up straight vertically on the blue axis, axes, and we're going to go up um, three quarters of an inch. And we're just simply marking out where this goal is going to be. The goal itself is going to be five and a half inches wide. We're going to stick to that original plan from the other Minwax measurement. So we're going to click on our midpoint. We're going to move over, uh, and we're going to create a guideline. That. There we go. Um, that's half of five and a half inches because remember that's the center right now. So half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So we're going to go two and we can do space three divided by four or we can just go 2.75 which is the same as two and three quarters. And then we're going to repeat that same <clears throat> measurement on the other side. So 2.75, enter. We'll know it's five and a half if, if we measure from there to there. Perfect, five and a half. Awesome. Next thing that we're gonna do is the actual height of the goal is going to be an inch and a half. So we're moving up, 1.5, enter. And there's the shape of our goal. That, or that's the basic layout of our goal. The only thing that we're gonna make a little bit different though is we're gonna make this so that it's a rounded shape. Um, just to give it a little bit of a extra detail, I guess, and something a little bit more, more neat looking. Um, so where are we going to start that arc? Well, first, there's a few ways you can always do things in SketchUp. I'm just going to start by drawing a pencil line across the bottom from there to there. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, get my tape measure tool again, and I'm gonna mark from this line up, let's go three quarters of an inch up, sticking with even measurements. Um, and then we're gonna get our arc tool. So we're gonna go with our arc. Oh, come on. There we go, which arc tool do we want? We want We want our two-point arc. Having troubles with this program. There we go. Yep, so that's two-point arc. And <clears throat> we're just gonna kind of make that shape on there. May not be exact. I'm trying to stay close to where our top line is. Um, next thing that I'm gonna do then is I wanna make sure that it's the exact same. Actually, let's undo that. Control Z is undo in SketchUp. Right here, I knew this is what I was going to do. We're going to go up there now. It's going to be perfectly even. So we clicked our two points, one, two, at those three quarter marks. And we're dragging this up. There's the top. And then we're just going to go back with our pencil tool. We're going to connect there and connect over here. And there's the shape of our net. Now, how do we make it into a hole? Well, when we're building this, we're actually going to probably drill a hole and use a jigsaw. Um, however, for now, we're just going to click on this with our push-pull tool. We're going to release and push it all the way back so it's even with the back edge. And that'll make it completely disappear. So there's our net. You notice that it automatically did it to the other side. Okay, so that's our ends. How do we get out of editing component? Hit your space bar to get your select tool, click off into the space around it. Now, last couple things that we have to add is that if we look at our original one, we've got some corner blocks right here that will help to keep the, the puck from getting stuck in the corners. 
Um, I've had some where we've made these rounded before, so a curve, an arc, so it kind of slides around better. For this, we're just going to keep it simple, we'll go with those triangular, triangular shapes. Um, and then there's also these optional zone defense things that I've done before, these goal blocks, where you have, um, basically we made these cubes, these two by two cubes, and then drilled a hole in the bottom with, put a dowel in it, and then drilled some holes throughout the playing surface so that you could move these blocks wherever you wanted to. Um, we ended up finding that they kind of just got in the way of the playing surface, so I don't think we'll include those, but we will make these corner blocks. So I'm just going to go back to that now. Um, so corner blocks, the original plan called for six by six inch corner blocks. Uh, however, for this case, since we did make the playing surface a little narrower, I'm going to suggest we cut that down to a four inch. A few ways we can do this to make a triangle. Um, easiest way probably is just to get your pencil tool. Click there at the corner, move in four inches, so four, enter. We're then going to hit escape. We're going to go back to that corner, go four inches the other way, hit enter, and then we're going to connect that with the other spot and it'll automatically snap to that endpoint. Then the next thing that we should do is pull this up. And we're going to pull that up um, three quarters of an inch. So there's our corner block for our puck to bounce off of. If we wanted to make this the full height as the sides, we could do that. It would provide some stability to this too. Um, and that what that requires either, since this is three inches on the side, um, gluing some several layer of these together and then cutting them out. And when making these, what I'm gonna suggest to the student is just simply to make a square piece that's four and an eighth inches by four and an eighth and then we'll cut across the corner. Why an eighth extra just to allow for our blade cut. So we'll cut corner to corner to split them in half. All right, now that we've got that one, we made a new piece, so we need to make it a component. So triple click, make component, G again for your shortcut. We're gonna call this corner block. And then we're gonna say glue to any, say okay. Perfect, we're now going to First off, we're gonna to have to copy this. So we're gonna get our move tool, M, and control to copy. We're gonna copy it to this corner. Oops, see what happened there? I didn't grab it where, it, where it's intersecting. So we're gonna try that again. I'm gonna grab it down at this corner, place it there. It's not the right direction right now. Well, there's a few things we can do. We can rotate it, we can, um, we can sometimes get away with flipping it, so I'm just gonna try flipping it. So we're gonna right click on the object, we're gonna say flip along, we're gonna try to flip it along the red axes. And there we go, so it flipped along, you see the red axes, red, red axes is right there, so we flipped it along that. And there we go, so that end is done. Um, the next thing that we could do is we can actually select both of these, and then by just holding control in our select tool, and clicking on them. And then we're going to get our move tool, hit control, so copy again. Um, I'm going to then take it from that point, rotate around, orbit around. Remember, if you push down on your scroll mouse, that will allow you to, to do that. Um, if we can't see our object here, we can also pan by hitting H and you're like, oh no, I lost what I was copying. It doesn't matter if you go back to your M again, you still have it. And so I'm just gonna place it in that corner. Because we have those two there, we wanna flip them again. So I'm gonna try to flip these, this time the, along the green axis. So flip along, green direction, perfect. There we go, that's done. And really that is the project. Um, the original plan shows for us to make our own mini sticks, which if we have time, we can do that. It shows the puck as being a half inch by one and a half inch diameter. I think I will ask the student to make the puck and make several of them because they might get lost. And to do that, 
just simply buy some inch and a half um, dowel and then cut it. Might make it a little bit higher than half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, but that would be the, the puck. And you can use just the plastic mini sticks or he can make his own little mini stick off of this direction. So that's it for this, uh, this table. We, I would suggest for him to um, paint this to uh, maybe not paint the surface just because we want it to slide really well. At most, maybe do a clear coat on the, on the surface. Uh, we could do like a whitewash and then clear coat the surface so it looks more like ice. That would look kind of cool. We could hand paint on some or spray paint on some, uh, some lines. If he wants, I would suggest having a line at the midpoint, at least to have a center line, just to mark off whose side is whose when you're playing this game. And that is the project. Um, of course, if we're gonna go build it, we do need to dimension it. Um, and just, I apologize, I'm still getting used to this. Yeah, so next to the tape measure here, we have our dimensioning tool. We wanna be able to build this, he's gonna have to complete a cost sheet and a parts list so he needs to know what these dimensions are um, and when you're dimensioning you only want to have the measurements that you need in order to build it and you don't want to duplicate that multiple times just because then it gets to be really cluttered um, and yeah uh, the details would obviously be more at this point over here or drawing it from this end maybe so that you would see where all these guidelines are and how to sketch this out on your actual block of on your actual piece when you're measuring um, like so as far as the arc goes just find your center point draw an arc between those two points and that's what we would do so do your basic dimensioning um, not sure what else I'm missing. Oh, let's turn off our guides if we're going to print this plan. So I can't find where to do this other than right here. So just search for the guides on this version and then turn them off. And what's nice about turning them off rather than deleting them is that you can actually see them. Same thing with our axes. If we want to turn off our axes, if we're going to print this, it'll look a little nicer. We can turn our axes off as well. And it's just more of a blank space then. So, yeah, I hope that uh, you enjoyed watching this and that um, maybe you'll consider building this. Have a wonderful rest of your day.